A Pan-African Investment Conference in Libreville, Gabon, has brought together over 1,000 business leaders and politicians from Africa and across the world to discuss investing in Africa. Well, leaders here have called for investment priorities that takes into consideration a framework of Africa's development priorities. Well, on the sidelines of the investment conference, I spoke with Gabon's president, Omar Bongo Ondima, and asked him about investing in Gabon and priorities for the continent. Gabon, a former French colony, got its independence in 1960. A census in 2009 put the population of this tiny but oil-rich West African nation at 1.5 million people. Since independence, Gabon has had three presidents. The incumbent, Ali Bongo Ondimba, has been in power since October 2009. In the early 1990s, Gabon embarked on a political reform path, introducing a multi-party system and a new democratic constitution that paved the way for a more transparent electoral process. Throughout her independence, Gabon has followed a non-aligned policy, advocating dialogue in international affairs and recognizing each side of divided parties. In inter-African affairs, Gabon embraces development by evolution rather than by revolution and favors regulated free enterprise. The country has played an important leadership role in the stability of Central Africa through its involvement in mediation efforts in Chad, the Central African Republic and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Today, Gabon is rated as one of the most prosperous countries in sub-Saharan Africa. It has the highest human development index, according to statistics from the African Development Bank, and the third highest GDP per capita after Equatorial Guinea and Botswana. Gabon's oil revenues have given it a strong per capita GDP of 8,600 US dollars. However, income distribution across Gabon remains quite skewed, with the most of the wealth in the hands of just about 20% of the entire population. Diversifying the Gabonese economy appears to be President Bongo's biggest challenge yet. Dwindling oil reserves have made it essential that Gabon starts preparing for post-oil economy. In 2010, on the eve of the country's 50th anniversary of independence, Gabon signed accords with three Asian companies to build infrastructure and develop palm oil and timber projects in this resource-rich nation. These deals are aimed at diversifying the economy and they are expected to generate upwards of $4.5 billion worth of investment in the resource-rich nation. The deals are aimed at diversifying the economy and they are expected to generate upwards of $4.5 billion worth of investment in the country. In addition, the job creation and infrastructure development opportunities that are at the core of these investments will help to alleviate poverty and stimulate social and economic development. Gabon's stability is encouraging. If the country's economy is steered away from its dependence on oil through investment in additional resource-based industries and the service and manufacturing sectors, this West African nation can achieve sustained future growth. Your Excellency, thank you very much for uh, granting us this time. You're hosting uh, a Pan-African Investment Forum for the second time. Uh, what is the significance of this forum? What are the aims? What are the objectives? We are very pleased to be able to host uh, this uh, forum. Our aim is very simple. We have wanted to put you know, uh, Africans uh, in touch, in connection with uh, world business leaders. And uh, it was very important because of, uh, many of the forums we have assisted, you know, we would hear you know, nice speeches, but at the end of the day, you know, our people you know, to see, need to see more concrete. So we thought that, you know, here in Gabon, we would organize then a venue where business leaders will be able to talk with African business leaders, but also be able to in connect with African leaders, political leaders. And for those le leaders to explain what's going on in their country, how open Africa is for business. And we are pleased to say that uh, the second uh, edition of this uh, forum is even more successful than the previous one. Africa is now being touted as the uh, economic frontier, the next economic frontier. What is your assessment, though, of Africa as an investment destination and of your country, Gabon, for instance? I'm very cautious, you know, though I'm optimistic by nature, but I'm very cautious about, you know, Africa, the next uh, frontier. This is, this, of course, it's nice. We have huge potential in Africa. But what we want now 
and when we have the interest you know of the rest of the world is to have more Africans participating we need more partnership we Africans have to understand that uh, the time has come for us to be more active we have business leaders we have you know uh, skill workforce so now we can talk and be heard it's no longer about coming to Africa to do business the way you want to it's also to do business the way Africans want to you know Africans to be heard exactly what we need and then go into partnership a real win-win situation and that hasn't been really the case in the past so this is really the message that we want to pass on come Africa is open for business but please do listen to the Africans and do business with them but does Africa though have the leverage to to enforce um, that sort of framework you're talking about they have what is the leverage they have it's just a matter of you know ambition and matter of will but we have and at this time we are starting to be heard and listened to but we need more than that so I think it's a matter of you know, ambition what we really want and uh, when you know that and when you have that ambition and you know what's best for your country then there's no problem what is Africa's strategy though because there is a lot of international attention now uh, on the continent there are new partners coming in China for instance what is Africa's strategy it is clear that uh, what is crucial for us the development of the infrastructure needs for more energy when you fly over Europe you fly over America at night there's always something you know when you look at outside your window some light you fly over the continent it's dark that goes to show you you know what our needs are so we need to develop those. We need to develop infrastructure to be able to develop, you know, project, industrial project, to connect people, you know. Uh, and this is where really the continent lacks, you know, is behind compared to others. And of course, uh, uh, it demands, you know, a lot of funds, uh, but we have the potential. You know, the continent is rich, so we can afford that, provided that it's done the right way. When you look at the, the continent, though, when you look at your country, uh, Gabon, who is it that Africa wants to partner with in, uh, you know, in those sectors that you're talking about, in building Africa's infrastructure, in lighting up the continent? We are, in, we are inviting just anyone who really wants to come to Africa, make money, and help us develop our countries. We are no prejudice against anyone. Provided just that, you know, we have our own laws and then people coming here respect those laws. But it's not a question about preference, that I'd rather have this one, rather have this one. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's business. And the one who has a good business proposal is the one that is interesting for me. And the one that has the means to come and help me develop my country is the one interesting for me. And if I can be friend with that partner, even, even better. Most African countries now, of course, have been independent over 50 years or coming on to 50 years. But even with our new partnerships, Africa is still uh, an exporter of raw materials. How is that going to change? Is that going to change at all? Or is it business as usual with our, you know, in, in the same way as uh, with our traditional trading partners? Mm -hmm. It has to change, as you, as you rightly said. And that has to do with political you know uh, will on our part when I took over I started changing you know that you know like in the wood sector we've stopped the export of you know logs I said well there needs to be you know processing here and uh, we've done so and it's been very difficult at the beginning but now the, that, that sector 40 percent more in, in increase you know, in production so we need to apply that to every sector so that's why I suggested when we attended the last TCAD meeting in Tokyo that we put ourselves 
under pressure, we African countries, and then decide by the year 2020, no more raw goods exported outside the continent. That we should start first, you know, processing in Africa. It doesn't, we don't demand to have, you know, finished, you know, goods, but at least start processing no more raw, you know, material exported from Africa. So that's a political ambition. And if we all are in agreement with that, uh, the, um, our partners and investors will have to follow. Because at the end of the day, we also need to create jobs. It's important for us as well as for others. So we don't see why our product should be developed in, 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 in other countries where it could be, it could be done in, Gab in, uh, in Gabon, for instance, or in Africa. But in order to do that, it would push us to develop a skilled workforce, change education system, really boost you know, professional training. So that's why we should fix that ambition in order for us to enhance programs or training, education, all these things. Is Africa though ready for industrialization? And one, how can countries like China um, assist Africa in its industrialization process? I think uh, overall in Africa we're ready for that. Well, we are. As I said, it's, it's a matter of political ambition. But by 2020, that gives us some time, you know, to achieve that, that goal. Uh, China is a friend of Africa. And we have many Chinese, you know, investors coming to Africa. Uh, it's for us to sit down with our Chinese partner and explain to them what we want. Uh, they need skilled workforce that we have to provide. But they understand that you always have to be in a win-win situation because a country needs to be developed, reduced to reduce, you know, to, to, to first to increase economic growth. And in order for that country to reduce poverty, see, and then reduce social tensions. If you are able to reduce poverty, and bring down all the positive social tension. Then you even attract more business people. You will need to create the right environment. Now, how am I going to invite investors if the, the environment is not right? So that's why investors have to speak with us to understand that it's even in their own advantage that we do all these things, that we appease people, that people are happy by the performance of the government by the uh, job being provided, you know, by training programs, all these things. People then going to be happy and then that will create a better environment for any investor. I want to talk about your um, oil industry. Now, Gabon's economy is uh, dominated by oil. What is the pillar of your economy and how diversified is uh, your economy? Because uh, there is talk, if, if, if I am correct, that uh, perhaps uh, Gabon's oil is uh, reducing, is on the decline? Well, as you say, talk, but not really accurate. While Gabon still have good reserves, we have decided to, to uh, start diversifying my economy so that one day when we run out of oil, we won't have a problem in terms of replacement. And it's better for us to start this program now while we still have good reserves on oil. So we're not at a situation that tomorrow we're going to wake up with no oil. Gabon still have you know, good reserves, so our oil policy is being very cautious. But also, we think of you know, transformation. You see. So we have identified other sectors. First, natural, naturally, would have to come with the wood. Gabon is covered 88% of the rainforest. So there you have an industry, a possible one, that we're developing at the same time that we're also preserving. You know, it's important for us. And, 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 and a, a figure, deforestation rate in Gabon is 0.01%. So it means that we're managing you know, the rainforest as much as, at the same time, 
we're also being able to work to exploit it. Now, then you have the mining sector, where put, put, you know, huge potential, and uh, where we, we have not even completely covered you know, a survey of Gabon to tell us exactly all that we have. But it, it's another sector that we can develop. Now, of course, in order for us to uh, develop this sector, whether mine, mining sector, uh, more you know, wood industry, or even move to agriculture, we need to develop infrastructure. Very important for us. But it is fair to say that we have the potential to develop a booming non-oil economy. And that we're starting to do it now. You have the potential to develop a non-oil booming economy, but what are uh, Gabon's needs? Well, I would just say that uh, last year, the non-oil sector, uh, it, I mean, growth rate was double digit compared to the oil. Just to show you that we've started well. Gabon, like any other country in Africa, you know, needs to develop its infrastructure to be able to provide, you know, and to 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 uh, energy source for many projects that we want to develop. Because the problem for us is to how you keep your economic growth rate at a certain level. So you have to develop, you know, activities. And in, or, in order to do that, you have first to develop infrastructure. But at the same time, you also have to increase the you know, level of performance of your education. You have to educate the people. Because as much as you start a new project, you need the, the people, you need the workforce, a skilled one. So you, you have to improve education, your health system, because you then have to provide for social needs for the people. The social needs for the people, it costs money. So you have to make that money first to make sure that you can cover all those different areas. So right now for us, it's uh, very important also to uh, be more aggressive when it comes to uh, agriculture. We spend too much money uh, uh, importing you know, food, whereas we could you know, develop a more aggressive uh, agricultural policy. We uh, need uh, to also start uh, developing a middle class. That is very important, and to support that middle class. And also for us, it's important to create you know, more, more small, medium enterprises. Because those entrepreneurs will then be the one to hire people and create more jobs. So the government has to provide for stability, security, provide for schools, you know, to train the people, health, uh, hospitals, all these programs. But on the economic side, push the diversification because then you no longer depend on oil, which it is a, a, a sector that does not employ much people because you need to employ your people. And you have a, as many other Africans that, you know, we have a, a population that's very young. Uh, so all these young people coming on the market, they need to find jobs. So if you do not diversify, it's going to be a problem. But thank God for us, we have different areas where we can do it. Now, a lot of African countries have recently become new oil and gas producing countries. Going by your experiences with Gabon, what would you say are some of the policies that could be put in place to ensure that there is equal income distribution when those countries become uh, oil producing? Oil can be a blessing, but it can also be a curse. Has it been a blessing for Gabon? It has been a blessing because, uh, thank God, we've had enough reserve to be able to correct the mistakes that, you know, that we made a few years ago. You know, and uh, to use that revenue, you know, in a correct, you know, manner. We all have the um, the ultimate aim to provide for the people. And in Africa, many, many needs, you know, social needs for the people. But there's always, always a problem is that 
to spend that money, you have to earn it. So this is fundamentally the, 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 the problem. So you need to have a strong economy you know, and make that money. How are you going to spend it and spend it right? So good governance comes into the picture. Good governance, not as a goal, but as a tool. As a tool to do the right thing, you know, to manage correctly. Not to spend when you don't have to, you know. And to take away corruption. And to make sure that when you have decided to allocate, you know, one penny, one dollar to this project, it goes there. So it's very important to have that, that tool. Now, many of us in Africa now recognize that, you know, governance, you know, is, is really a, 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 a very important tool for us to be used. And that's why you see many improvement, you know, gone are the days where people would do as they wish. Now they're more accountable. And our accountability is very important. We don't need to be told about that. We know that. You know. And uh, so it helped us improve performance. And not just to decide and, on, and go on projects that not needed. Good sound economic plan based on really what you have. And then also to be linked with education. Meaning like if I'm a country of rainforest, I'm not going to uh, spend uh, and educate people to be expert on desert. Uh, see? So it might sound you know, ridiculous to say, but in many cases that's what we've done. And that's why we've had found ourselves with people, young people, having degrees, diplomas, but couldn't find a job in the country because there was no you know, connection between job offers and education, which we're trying to change now by involving you know, the private sector. So it, it then shows how public-private, you know, partnership is very important. And also what is important for us is to attract foreign, you know, direct investment. You know. And uh, we have been pleased to see uh, that our Chinese friends, and I've been in, uh, in the, those past years in Africa, investing a lot. So foreign direct, you know, investment is important, but then the investor has to feel safe, then create a safe environment, you know, with a lot of you know, in, uh, incentives for the investor to feel safe and come and invest. So all this is necessary if we want to have uh, uh, the, uh, the revenue necessary for us to apply and, and satisfy the needs of the people. A safe and, and, and secure environment for investment is, is what you're talking about there, yes. but the Central African region has had a little bit of instability. Uh, let's talk about the Central African Republic, for instance. What is Gabon's role and the region's role in stabilizing uh, the CARU um, as the current chair of CEMAC? We have uh, been assisting and helping that country for now decades, and unfortunately, uh, we see our brothers and sisters in Central Africa still very going through difficult times. Uh, at this last uh, CIMAC summit, we decided to support even more by sending troops there to help uh, pacify the country, you know, and uh, appease people, and then make sure that provided the, uh, uh, a peaceful environment for the uh, authorities to conduct, you know. Uh, elections to have you know elect proper you know, representatives that could then revisit you know the constitution and then have a, a, a good government so there it means that you have the security issue where we are all you know uh, really working very hard to help by even sending more people but central africa is is a, is, a, is a large country so it demands to you know many many soldiers so we are also appealing to uh, non-regional uh, members to also help us in that field. But at the same time as we are sending more troops, we're also providing support, financial support to that government to make sure that you know, the civil servants' you know, uh, wages can be paid, but also to support the military, military operation. But we want to show commitment you know, from the region, and commitment should, from the region should be met 
should be met, excuse me, by commitment from outside the region. But we cannot ask others to do what we cannot do ourselves. So we understood that. So that's why we're committing ourselves, you know, strongly. We're not waiting for others to come. But everyone has to understand that uh, the uh, security of uh, Central African uh, Republic I I is very important because the, the geography, uh, we don't want all the neighbors to be destabilized. So, so, so far we have been able to, to stop the stabilizations of the neighboring countries. So we're talking to the authorities in Central Africa and telling them that you guys need to sit down. You guys need to sit down because what's happening is not good, not only for you, but for your people. Now, if we go on like this, they no longer be, no longer be a, a country, a country for you to run. Even for those that have political ambition, what country will you be the leader of? What is the long-term, though, objective uh, of SEMAC, for instance, for the CAR? What is the long-term solution? Well, CIMAC is uh, bringing uh, support to uh, the, the, regional, uh, the, the regional organization at, la at, at large, way, which is ECAS. So CIMAC is bringing financial support. Uh, according to the uh, um, uh, Libreville Agreement, this, uh, we have an interim uh, transitional uh, committee and with also an interim government. And uh, within one year, you, we should start seeing results. No, one year. We want to see results. Your Excellency, before I let you go, I just want to get uh, your final comment. What would you say uh, to investors, to countries like China, for instance? Well, first, I would like to thank our Chinese friends because this forum uh, is organized where? In a stadium built by the Chinese, you know, in partnership with the Chinese. So it just shows that, you know, that you can use you know, this stadium for multi-purpose. And uh, it also a, a symbol of, you know, Chinese involvement in the development of Gabon. Uh, we've had uh, many, many uh, investors from China, but con contrary to others, I'm saying that that's not enough. We need more investors from China. So they should come to Africa. Africa at large is safe. But as any other place in the world, there are some places that are more safe and others that are not. But overall, the continent is safe. The continent uh, is doing much better. The countries where you have success stories, where it is safe to invest. So we're inviting those investors to come. And uh, it's a win-win situation because we, are, we want to interact with our Chinese uh, friends as partners. And uh, so far, uh, it has been working. And uh, we Africans have been very pleased to know about Chinese involvement in Africa. Your Excellency, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.